Welcome back YouTube. Tales from the Blast Furnace. I am the god of hellfire and I bring you fire. Or maybe not. Tales from the slightly damp Blast Furnace. It is. It is still 25 and a half degrees. Um, yeah, we were forecast sort of thundery showers, isolated, and fucking sod's law, the isolation would be over myself. Um, but yeah, other than that, it has been fucking boiling. It has been roasting. <laughs> um, so probably a little bit of a blessing disguise if it's just a you know sort of sun shower or whatever. But we'll see. Um, I'm two sheets to the wind. I've just watched the oh, Lamego okay. off on complete tangents, as I say. I am more than two sheets to the wind. Um, I've got some crackers, some absolute fucking balters, honestly. Um, God, I, I do apologize, I've just had a sneezing fit as well, so that doesn't help. Hopefully, hopefully we will be booting tomorrow. Um, I'll wait and see, wait on my mate Ryan, see if he's going. Uh, I don't think this spot of rain's gonna influence it too much, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll boot him. Other than that, I've got some Facebook, got some eBay, and I've got some C to the E to the X. But not the kind of, th one kind that you think of, but the others aren't what you think. Oh, God. Cheers. Right. <laughs> oh, excuse me. First up, first up to the Oki. <laughs> excuse me. Bit of Facebook in, uh, Facebook in, bit of eBay. We'll do Facebook afterwards. Um, seen this game at the Leeds retro market I think the guy wanted 20 they wanted 30 quid about the manual I've managed to get this for a really good price on eBay not about you know not like 10 10 pound anything like that it's 22 pound 50 all in I think it was all in uh, it's complete and to be fair the guy sort of said it was good it, I think it's it's in pretty near to mint condition to be honest uh, and it is a price fighter this one's eluded me it's not a massively expensive game. Is it rare? Not really. Um, but it is one that you just don't tend to see for a good price. A lot of people, 60 quid upwards. Um, I'll tell you what, other than the outside, which I think is what's probably, it's probably gone, oh yeah, there's a bit lot to show you. There's like a little scuff. See it there? But it's just the outside. The discs, and this is two discs, by the way. So if you are picking this up, make sure you get two discs. Um, but yeah, overall, really happy with that one. Um, it, like I say, it's, it's one that's always about, but it's getting it for the right price. You, you know, it's, it's like I say, it's not a rare one or anything like that. Um, looks to be one of the FMV type jobbies that, uh, that were knocking about at that time. But it's another one off the list nonetheless. So that's Prize Fighter on the mighty Mega CD. I do like that front cover. Sticking with the Mega CD, St um, sticking with eBay, obviously. Um, this one has been on there for ages. I'm not going to sneeze in a minute. I was only an hour in for the. I'm going to sneeze. Hang on. <coughs> Welcome back after the sneezing fit. Um, this one, I've been looking at. I'd had this on watch list for, and I'm really surprised that no one bought it. Um, but I had it on for, it must be like weeks. And I didn't really think too much of it. And then one popped up again, you know, like newly listed. I thought, I wonder what happened? And it, it just suddenly dawned on me. I thought, I'm sure I was watching a particular item. So I just did a search, you know, cheapest, blah, 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 blah. And it was still there. Now, the thing with it was, it was all smashed to smithereens. So it's still smashed to smithereens, but slightly less smashed to smithereens. So... For 20 quid, I'll tell you what, it's still a really good price at 20 quid. It's all complete. Uh, it's got the foamage in it now. Uh, <coughs> so it still needs a case. But this case is way better than the case that it was in. And it's Chuck Rock. And it is the power version of the Blue Spine. The Blue Spine! As you can see, there is a big dirty fucking crack across it still. But this one is hinged. <laughs> Excuse me, and we do have a bit of foamage. The disc is absolutely, honestly, for 20 quid. Another one that's, that they're, I mean, they're asking, they're always asking. 
uh, 60 odd bows. Some people pay it, you know, I don't really... You know, a lot of people get annoyed with eBay. Oh, they're asking too much money. You don't have to buy it, man. Don't, it's just what people have... Some people just chuck it out there. It's like a fishing rod, you know. Say anyone's going to buy it or not. Um, and you don't have to buy, you know, you don't have to buy it, basically. Um, yeah, quite really happy to get that one. Not that, that it's... See, retro collector this is down as common. I don't think it's that common. I really don't. I think um, I think Chuck Rock 2 is more common than this one. It's that fucking... These long boxes. Sozzled. Absolutely fucking sozzled. Facebook. Facebooking, motherfuckers. Uh, I'm going to sneeze again. I can feel it. Bloody no. Do you know what it is? I think it's when it, it's when the rain starts washing the irons out. Out the atmosphere, it really triggers my. I, I don't really suffer from hay fever, but if the pollen count's really high, then it, it does kick in. But I think it's just something different. I can just smell, smell it's gonna rain. Anyway, who cares about that? I'm not a fucking town dog. Um, from Facebook, from Facebook, off me mate, Mickey Ormond, Mikey Ormond, Michael, McKillian Ormond. Um, he had this up for 25 quid, uh, 28 quid, sorry. I got it for 25. I think he had it, he went around a week or something and he sort of bumped it again. Um, one that I needed, obviously, because I wouldn't have bought it otherwise. It's missing the manual. Bert, Bert, Bert Reynolds. Um, like you all do, just double, double, ch double checked on eBay. And to be honest, before he was asking, it wasn't that bad. I said, look, mate, would you do 25? Said, yeah, to you, yeah. Returning customer, valued customer that I am. Excuse me, for, for 25 quid, again, as a nice stock guy. If I bought this from CEX, um, I think they might be about the same price. I can't remember. I would have been happy, um, given the insert and the cartridge. So, I ain't got no arguments. Well happy with this. Lovely stock gap. Look to upgrade get the manual and his Aero the Acrobat on the Mega Drive and tell you what you can't go wrong where is it with a Sunsoft game not in the six, 8 and 16 bit genre I don't think they put even half a foot even a my left foot remember that film my left foot and the car is gouge so big thanks to Michael Ormond, Aero the Acrobat, um, was released across the SNES as well, I don't think it got uh, any of the 8-bit releases though, <sighs> still fucking warm, it's 26.7 now, the problem is it's like headache weather, you really need it to piss it down, to clear the air, to clear the atmosphere, wowzers, right, anyway, I'm not Eureka Johnson, Johnson. Stop watching. I need to stop. Stop watching now. This is going to be a fucking car crash TV. My nose is twitching like a motherfucker. Anyway, more Facebooking. <laughs> um, switching up a little bit. Uh, going across. Going across to another platform. There's a chap on there. What's his name? Ben Bizzly Bizzle. So I'm guessing his name's Ben Bizzle, really. And he's put Bizzly Bizzy in the middle. Um, he had a load of... And I remember seeing this post probably about a week ago, I think, on Retro Round. Selling off a load of, like, really quite... You know, well, not quite nice. Really nice PlayStation games. Um, he did another sort of update post <coughs> saying this is all that's left and at that point I thought well if that's all that's left what's the chances of you know getting a few get a bit of a deal get the wheel get the deal so uh, that's about a few a couple of uh, titles um, I think there's five in total and then it was something to do with a couple of the others and I sort of said tell you what how about these three for I think I said 50 quid which is again every video is a lot of money um, the cheapest one when he sort of said about this I actually double, double, had a double take and I thought no actually still you've been daft and I did double, double check on eBay and it is the going price I mean 
fuck me what I paid for this. It needs a case swap. A lot of these do actually do need a bit of a case swap. It's not that they're completely mong, they just need a bit of a, just a little bit, a few dinks here, a few cracks there. Um, but yeah, when I think about what I paid for this on the Saturn, and it's like fucking eight quid or something, and it's Swagman on the PlayStation. I don't think I've got this. I think it sort of said something like seven quid. I mean, by the time I bundled all these together, it was it's a lot lower anyway. It's an honest manual. Uh, it did say the discs are all right. The discs are all right, yeah. They're not, yeah, you know, honest discs, to be honest. Um, yeah, you've got the swag. It's got that sticker there. I could probably get off of a bit of, if I was even that way inclined, um, get the old label remover on it. But to be honest, it don't really bother me too much. The only thing is, just a back. Got a crack in it. We'll get a who wants to be millionaire donor and we'll switch it out which is probably what a lot of these will need and they look fine so yeah from like eight nine quid up to 190 200 pound fucking retro gaming the biggest fucking scam going i tell you the bubble's gonna burst sell up sell the fucking lot then join youtube and all the forums and Bitch and moan and tell everyone else to sell up as well. Fucking shock 16. Nail on the head, bruv. Said it before, there's nothing worse than a converted Christian or a reformed smoker. Fucking hell. Annoying bastards. Just fuck off. You've got nothing to add. Piss off. No, there was a... Often tangent. There was a, a thread running. Uh, Wes... Oh... Wes Harper, I think it's Wes Harper, it was on about selling off or selling some of his satin collection. And he just sort of said, like, has anyone done it and what did they regret it, this, that, and the other. And you know, it's quite an interesting thread seeing different people's points of view and stuff like that. Um, and it was just like shocks when whatever you do, don't be one of them cunts that sells it all, then fucking regrets it and then bitches and moans and trolls people telling them to sell the stuff as well to make themselves feel better. And that is the truest word, man, honestly. Really is. Uh, and I, I sort of said, look, if you don't need the money, and you don't, and or you don't need the space, because that's usually the catalyst, isn't it? Let's be honest. Then just fucking keep it. Um, you know, I don't buy any of this stuff. Sort of thing. Ooh, ooh, ooh I'm going to retire later on. No, ain't gonna happen. Uh, equally, I don't think there's any bubble that's going to burst. Um, I think a quote. I think I put a, like a, a comment to Wes, and I sort of said, look, case in point, right? Okay. Completely off tangent here, but case in point, um, historically, looking back, what three three years ish, um, all your sixteen bit stuff was the, the go to stuff, and it, it still is. It still is to a certain extent, you know, especially Super Nintendo. Um, say sixteen, but probably eight bit as well. Your, your, your NES uh, and your Super Nintendo probably fueled in part from from the states. Let's be honest, because there's a big, big pull from there. Uh, us in in Europe, we were we were more inclined, I think, before the SNES, um, to be Sega people. Definitely, I, I, I would hundred percent kind of agree with that. Especially in terms of the mass system, I know more people had mass systems than they did NESs and stuff like that. And it's been documented. It's well documented. We were an we were an eight bit micro uh, island. You know, your Spectrums, your C64s, your Amstrads. No doubt about it. Uh, but in terms of then, when that sort of flips and it um, transcends to sort of collecting later on, what you what you found is in terms of pricing, and actually it, it sort of feeds into uh, Burnout Culture. He did a video about um, PlayStation Two games and they're sort of lying dormant, you know, as a, as a sort of untouched sort of gold mine. And I'll come to that because I, I kind of agree with him a little bit. Um, but in terms of like the 8-bit micros um, and uh, the sort of 16-bit machines, what you found is when retro gaming sort of started sort of tipping over a little bit, it wasn't really those that everyone um, sort of congregated to. It wasn't your Amigas, it wasn't your Atari STs, it wasn't your Spectrum, it wasn't your Commodore 64s, it was the SNES, it was, it was even the NES. It was a little bit the sort of mass system, a little bit the Mega Drive, but not really the Sega stuff. And I, I don't know if like I say I don't know if that is that was part, um, you know, caused from the states or what. I don't know. So that's why you see now SNES stuff 
or anything Nintendo tends to hold its value and it holds a premium. But over the years, and anyone who's been in, in this game as long as I have, you've seen a shift, a seismic shift in terms of what has been like now deemed sort of sought after. Not rare, but just sought after. And it's the Sega, obviously, like I say, Mega Drive stuff. Going up, going up, going up, going up. Is it surprising? Not really, because I say we are predominantly, I think historically, um, you know, as an island, or even if you want to call us part of Europe, um, we have been Sega people. So from a domestic collected aspect, I think when Retro, again, like got its legs, gained a bit of momentum, a lot of people, myself included, was like, well, I remember the mass system. That's that's my go. Hence why I went for the mass system. Um, looking to the 32 bit, I think that kind of then it really um, you had a, a much broader spread of machines. You had your GameCube, um, <coughs> Sega Saturn, and obviously the mighty PlayStation. Uh, you, you know, and the PlayStation was dominant. It was it was it was a master of all all it surveyed. There's no doubt about it. Um, but from a collection, a collector point of view, uh, and again, I, I mentioned this to, to, to Burnout Culture, I remember, and you guys who've been on YouTube long enough will remember when Game had a, you know, I think it's when they were either going out of, they were, they were going to go out of um, business, or it might be when they merged with Electronics Boutique, one or two of that, and they had a massive sale on PlayStation. And I remember they had rows, shelves of PlayStation games, you know, like, two for three quid and stuff like that and I think back now I think fuck should have bought a few <laughs> should have bought a few more PlayStation games and that's what I lured to to burn out video and I think a little bit of the PlayStation 2 is, is viewed the same like the PlayStation was back then because there was a lot of shit we can see a lot of shit up here there's loads of shit um, but there's some gems some absolute quality and you know not the great games but they are quite rare because they're limited runs like the phoenix i think it's the phoenix on this one uh the 505 505 street games on the playstation 2 so you know in terms of um the retro side and, and what then becomes um sought after and valuable man you, you've just got to fucking chance your arm sometimes because you don't know um again the wii you know i think the wii is going to be way more collectible than the 360 and the ps3 will ever be they're peanuts um is it because it's Nintendo? I don't know. I think anything that's physical media, uh, especially the way the current gen's going, it's a dying breed. And I think it will be collectible. Um, but yeah, in terms of like your PlayStation 1 games, going back to sort of Swagman, and where that's sort of 7 quid and the, the Saturn version, 32-bit versions, like fucking 200 odd quid. That's just the forces of fucking business working. There's no doubt about it. Now, whether or not, that's going to go up in price. I just think that was produced more. Um, so from a, from place of perspective, in terms of the, the, the volumes, a bit like the PS2, the volumes do not denote um, that something's technically rare, um, sought after, wanted, you know, highly regarded. Yes, most definitely. Uh, but rare, I think you're pushing it a little bit. Uh, limited print runs, I say, I think with these, the PlayStation, I think it was like the Phoenix titles. They're shit games. Absolutely shit. Is it Hercules? I think that's one of the rarest ones and it's shit. It's like some game you'd fucking see in Morrison's or fucking Poundland 10, 15 years ago. Um, and with the PlayStation 2, I think it's 505 Street Games. I've got a few of them. But... If you are, if, and I think going back to cool, uh, Burnout Culture's video, uh, the PS2, is it a silent, you know, is it a sleeping giant? Probably yes. I think a lot of people, myself included, I've got some of the sort of tastier titles on the PlayStation 2. Not the ones that are the rarest at all, but the ones that are probably more sought after, you know, God Hand and all that kind of shizzle. I've got them. Um, but people getting into it now, you can still find them in the charity shops. You can still find them at the car boot. Uh, I think he lured to the point that, you know, in terms of PS1, they are getting thin on the ground, bizarrely. And he's right, they, they are. Uh, if you want to get into it, PlayStation 2, and I'll probably argue the Wii, is, is not a bad avenue to sort of um, wet, your, wet, wet your feet, wet your appetite, if you like. Um, because all the stuff uh, pre that, it, it, it can be quite expensive. It can be cheap enough if, if you, you know, if you know how to look and you know what you're doing. Um, 
and I have no idea what I've just talked about at all. <laughs> Be all cut out, some fucking drivel. Help me, help me to help you. Anyway, Ben Bizzly Bizzle. What else did I get from him after that complete? If you, if it, I even included it, it was a complete fucking side swipe. Um, I don't think I've got this one either. I don't know. Um, I think it's fifteen quid he had on it. I can't remember now. Xevious three D G plus. You know, I'll check and I've probably got this. One of the sort of hard plastic cases. So if, um, Holster, if you're watching, that Jackie Chan one, I think yours will fit into one of these type cases. Other side note. The only problem is it's got a crack at the back. And the problem is because these are these hard, weird, smaller plastic cases, you can't just easily swap them over. But it's all there. I might have one or two of these, I can't remember now. I will have to check. Or is it crazy here again, says? Oh, we'll have to check the stock shelves. Yeah, we'll have to check the stock shelf. It's just Xevious, it's all the Xevious variations. Um, in a nice... I think I've got Xevious on the, on the... I'm sure, I don't know, I've got Xevious on the NES. Have a go up here. You watch your fucking pound pen, I've got Xevious. Oh no, the only X I've got is X2. We do not appear to have Xevious yet. It may be hidden. Cannot, yeah, you can't see the Z. Um, last one from Ben Bizzle Bizzly. I oh, was a bit surprised at this one. A, because I've never heard of it. Which, again, comes back to Burnout's video. I'm not giving a bit of a shout-out. Actually, go and, check, go and check his videos out. He does a lot of, um, not community questions, but he, he, you know, he creates some... Um, Topical questions, and he uses arcade versus, I think, Spectrum video. They're quite interesting as well. Um, <laughs> no idea what I was like saying then. Cut. Totally pissed. Cut. Forget it. Forget it. I've remembered. I've remembered what the point was. The point is. Don't fucking drink too much, Stu. <coughs> Twat. Um, no, the point. <laughs> the point was um, from Burnout Culture's video. He, he sort of mentioned me, and he sort of said, you know, blah 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 blah. And he cited, obviously, in terms of like, especially the PS2 library. You can't know everything. Uh, yada yada yada. And this is a, a case in point because <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know everything. Fucking no one can know everything. Right? That's just. A daft, that's a daft statement. Uh, you can know enough, you can know a bit, you can, you know, whatever, fill your feet. Uh, but case in point, I didn't even know this was released. Uh, it's, again, these are all placed, the last one's a PlayStation game, oh, yeah, they're all PlayStation games, there's only three of them. Um, I didn't know this was released. Um, when I sort of saw it on Ben's listing, I thought, fucking hell, is that the same um, IP that it was on the NES? And sure, as eggs is eggs, it was, and it is. Um, <clears throat> quite a, a, a uh, pricey title as well, and I think I've got it for less than what he must have paid for it, or someone's paid for it anyway, that's for sure. Um, I don't think it got a 16 bit release, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know, educate me. Every day's a school day, case in point. Anyway, for I think he had this for 30, yeah, because I said 50 quid, so this is for 30. 15, I think he had like 8 on that or 7 on that, I said would you do it for, I think it was, yeah 50 quid all in, I said yeah it's fine, and I've got me Blaster Master, blasting again, so if you don't know what Blaster Master is, <clears throat> have a Google, have a Luke, again the Sunsoft title, um, it's an NES absolute classic, the music, you've, you've heard, if you've watched any retro gaming channels, Pound to Penny, other than DuckTales, you've heard Blaster Master music in the background. Now that looked to me like he's bought that from a gaming market at some point for 40 bones. 
And that ain't, I say, that's recent, that's got to be recent. A bit dusty. It's not, yeah, it's an honest copy, there's a few, whatever, but it's all there. Um, I've watched some videos on YouTube of this. Yeah, I can, uh, I think it's playing a lot on its heritage. Um, but yeah, I'll say I'm yet to play it, I don't really know. You can still jump out the vehicle. Um, so with the NES one, you had, it was um, a side scrolling sort of, wasn't even really a platformer, <coughs> a bit like Silkworm, shooting shit, jumping, you can jump, you can shoot up, shoot down, yada yada yada. And when you get to a certain point, you got to jump out the car, vehicle, and you go into like a dungeon or cavern, and then it's like um, a, a top down 3D, not 3D isometric, but that sort of view, um, and you, you're going through mazes. Whereas this one here, I think you jump out in the same scenario, from what I can see from the videos. I haven't played it, I don't know. Um, but I thought, you know what? For 50 quid all in, it wasn't a bad price. I mean, like I say, the guy who ever bought this has paid 40 quid for it anyway, so. And that's definitely real. That might look like a Rich King Retro price, that might. Okay, the next section. There can only be one section left in a 2T video. Of course, it's a C to the E to the X. It's not the kind of CEX pickups that you think. It will be initially, and then it won't be. And it'll either won't be till the end. Um, no, I haven't bought, uh, and conscientiously bought, a fake game, and then gone on to Slate, and will not go on to Slate CEX, for how much they may or may not have charged me for a fake game that they have never stocked, nor probably will do. Um, but hey, that's YouTube for you. <sighs> There's some f fucking idiots out there. What I have got from CEX anyway is an honest copy, is a legit copy. Um, paid 60 quid, took a punt, always take a punt. CEX is a punt, it's a fly, it's the roulette. You never know what you're going to get. It could be fake. Chances are, it's probably not, not with this one anyway. Um, Here's my bet, it hasn't got a manual. Not the end of the world, still at 60 quid, not bad. You'll see the video now. Okay guys, we'll see the X, weight test is not good on this. Um, and pound to a penny, I don't know which one it's gonna be. Um, Semi expensive. I know it's gonna be that game. So that's Sod's Law. Uh, it's a bit attacked. Yeah. Ah, what a bastard. Still a little bit. I can get that off. Overall. That's not bad. <coughs> to be honest. 60 quid. That's not too bad. Hopefully that's on the out looks like that's on the outside. Yeah, that's gone. <laughs> so other than that sticker, which I can get off quite easy. Um that's alright. Bloody knew it would be that one. Yep, so you can see what it is. Air of the Acrobat 2. Still think at 60 quid for all now what you what I looked when I looked on eBay, there's a lot of Australian ones of this, and they are cheaper. And they are complete. Uh, I've managed to remove, remove said label. Still, it's not, not great, but it's not the worst. Um, other way, still, you pissed up twat. Honest enough, Edgeware, across the top, it's not reproduced. See, you remember me? No, they're not. <laughs> uh, and the cartridge, again, honest enough. Add a bit of gunk on it, add a bit of grime, dirt we can deal with, but get yeah, no man of the well. You know, it is what it is. Complete asking for, I don't, there wasn't many sold. 
Um, there's not many sold items on this, and it's not because people are asking too much for what the completed ones. It's just, I just don't think it. I don't think it's it's that common to be sat. There's loads of ones in the, the Australian with the big G on it. Uh, the manual's like black and white, uh, blue and white, and stuff. Uh, <coughs> and yeah, technically, yes, you can sort of say that is a PAL version, and that would, you could quite rightly so add that into your collection. Um, I just took a punt on this, to be honest, about 60 quid. That's probably what I think some of the Australian ones, give or take, are going for. Could be wrong. Um, but yeah, so at the end of the day, I've got Acrobat 1 and 2 for, what, 85 quid. Both games, 85 quid. It's not bad. It's not. Yeah, they both need manuals. Um, but they're both legit. They're both, you know... Um, the correct, if you like, the correct UK versions. Um, so that's, I think that's a win-win a little bit. I'll take that. Right, it's the last CX pickup. Not really a CX pickup, but it was from CX. Um, bit of a story, tooty style, as per usual. Okay, so I need to set the scene. Um, okay, so I need to set the scene. As you know, look, I do a lot of dealings with CEX. All the time, buying stuff. Is it right? No, it's going back. I don't show everything. I've told you that before. I've tried to do the sort of unboxing videos. The stuff that's, that's relevant, but the stuff you see that I've just opened up, it's shit. So I don't even bother showing it, because I, I, I'm not going to show it here. Um, so I just don't bother showing the unpacking uh, footage. I think there's two games, I can't remember what they were now. Uh, they went back today. I think one was. Um, oh, God. Dracula. And one was. Some Vengeance on the Mega Drive. I can't think now because I'm too pissed. So, you know, do my shopping in the day. CX is always the last stop because they take. You, know, they, you have to queue up. They, they take the time. I get that. I don't mind. I'm done, so I'm walking to CEX. There's a guy at the till um, with one of the lads that I know there. He's a nice, he's a really nice guy, and um, he's there with the manager as well. So the manager, he can be a little bit uh, not hard work, um, but he can be a bit dubious of everything and anything. Really, really sceptical, which is probably not a bad thing for CEX to be honest. Because I'll say the one, my local one. I, when I spoke to the chap afterwards, he says they probably have the lowest return rate of retro because they are really, really picky. It, it, everyone bangs on the old slate fucking CX and stuff. I tell you what, there's not much that gets past these guys. Um, and I was stood in the queue. There was a guy in front of me, and he had this pile of games. And I'll show them later on. Um, and they were arguing with him about the condition. That's how good they are. Maybe because all the shit I take them back, and I point out all the faults. Uh, and I've had discussions with the manager before, and I've, you know, so I'm not sort of saying, oh, it's because of me, oh, it's because of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've, I've sorted it all out. But I think I kind of, um, I've kind of engineered their way of thinking in terms of what I would deem as acceptable. Uh, and not only that, the, I say the, the manager is he, like that with everything. The phones a lot. He knows mint means mint. Mint means he's even told me because mint means it's just come out of the box. So if it's not that, then he won't give you mint. Um, now he's probably lost a lot of sales from doing that. But fair play to him. Like I say, you know, uh, they've got a copy of Trombon in there, which if you looked at it and I've looked at it, I've, I said to him that's mint. He goes, yeah, but Stu, there's this here, and I said, well, you're right. <clears throat> But if I bought bought that copy, and I've, I've nearly a few times, but it's, it's CEX's prices for Trombon is still more than eBay at the minute. Um, and I said to him, if, if I if I had this, you know if I had like shit tons of credit and I bought that as box and I got that, I would be fucking happy as hell. And he's tried to sell me it loads of times. Uh, but my case, what I'm trying to say is, um, in terms of all the slack, all the slack, all the flack that they get. Um, there's still there are st still few bastions of honesty out there. They won't just take any shit in and, and mark it as so. I think someone made a comment on Galaxy Sega Retro Round saying my mate bought two mint, mint games and he didn't come out with any manuals. And when he took them back, the people in the store said, "Yeah, well, mint just means the, the cartridge and the, the box." I don't know. I don't know if that's true. 
It'd be hard to believe if anyone from CEX would do that. They may do, because there's some fucking idiots out there. Anyway, back to the story. So I'm at the, I'm literally in the queue. There's a guy in front of me with this pile of games. Um, the chap I'd be on the counter. There's a manager, the other side of the counter, talking to the guy. And he, obviously I turn up and say, oh, yeah, morning. Da, da, da. And the manager turned around and goes, oh, this guy will know. Pointing to me. So I walk over, obviously, because they've invited me into the conversation. And he, they were talking about what's mint, what's not mint, and the pricing. And... Um, I looked at some of the games and some of them are in really nice condition, some are battered. Uh, so the guy who's there, I'm thinking, oh, obviously he, is he trying to pull a fast one? And these guys, but it turns out the guy's not. The guy just wants to sell them, which is like, fucking hell. So the guy's saying to me, like, he goes, well, to be honest, like, I said, like, there's one game, I showed the first one. I think they offered him £1.75 for it. Uh, and he goes, I said, oh my god, what happened to that one? He goes, they've been in the cupboard, mate. He goes, look, to be honest, he says, I ain't bothered. I just want, I want a shot of them. He goes, I, I'll get whatever I can get from. And I'm like, and then the manager has to, I think he has to go to a meeting. So I'm there with the guy I know on the other side of the counter. And this guy who's trying to sell these games. <clears throat> and I'm chatting to him, because even the guy behind the counter said, oh, this guy collects retro games. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm you know, really into it, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so weirdly enough, um, I kind of... Dutch auctioned CX a little bit on these ones because the guy was like, "Well, I said, well, what you know?" Um, I think there's one game uh, I'll show you in a minute, but from the box to the mint, it's like about thirty quid difference, stuff like that. <clears throat> and uh, so I said to the guy, "Like, I'll, I'll buy these off you," you know, like literally like that. The guy, the, the, the side of the counter heard me. He went, "Stuart," he said. If you want to do that, you need to take it outside. So he wasn't like saying, fuck off, get out. He's just basically saying, look, you can't do it in the store. <clears throat> so I looked at the guy and said, what's up to you? And he, he looked at me and I said, I tell you what, look, what are they offering? So to be fair to the guy on the other side of the counter, he's not bothered, he, he, he just works there. He turned it up, he said, it's £54.75. And the guy looked at me and said, what are you offering? And I went, 65 And he went, done. He had a console, he had a box console, and he, he had two box consoles, and um, I just basically thought to myself, okay, I know the manager, as long as he's getting some profit, he should be happy. So I said to the guy behind the counter, I said, look, leave them, Let, you, you guys have them, because I've got them anyway, I'm not that overly fussed, I've, I've got nice copies of them anyway. Um, and then if you want to, you can just sort of say to Armin, obviously the guy just didn't want to sell the games, because they were obviously not the right price. He's still with me. So we have to obviously vacate said store. Um, and I said to the guy, look, I've got a bit of cash, I need to go to the machine. It's only down, down the high street. So we walked down there, his name's um, Dave. Yeah, his name was Dave. Uh, and I just sort of said to him, I said, daft question, because you have to ask it anyway. Not that I said that to him, but have you got any, anything else? Anything else knocking about? He said, well, I might have a spectrum. I said, great, so what, what I'll do, I'll get you cash, we'll do the deal. We'll swap numbers. If you've got anything else, hit me up, man. Or if you know anybody else has got anything, hit me up. So for 65 quid, um, did I snipe CEX? Probably yes. Um, but I think, in, in all honesty, it's probably done them more good than it would have done if I hadn't bought them. Because obviously the guy was a little bit like... Um, I think just the, the way they were dealing with him a little bit. Because obviously, again, some of the stuff is battered. Some of the stuff is, is kind of like borderline. But from a CEX uh, condition, and that's what, that's what I was saying to the guy, even in the store saying to him, saying to him, if I bought that as mint, I wouldn't be happy with X, Y, and Z. So he kind of got it a little bit, but at the end of the day, he was happy just to get rid of it. He just said, look, do you want mate? I'll, I'll, I'm happy to get rid of it. It's just in the way. Uh, so CEX got the consoles. They're going to make double, triple the money on them. I've got the games. Um, and I think there's a few here that I haven't got actually, or I haven't got boxed. The first stop, which bizarrely they take out. So if anyone's buying this, if you're buying this boxed from CEX, you don't get the game. I think that's wrong, but that's how it is. And it's Super Mario All Stars. So you know where we're going with this. And I think they said to him, we'll offer you. Five quid. I don't know what it was. It was somewhat mad. 
Uh, that's the only loose cart because obviously that was with his box system. This one is a real shame because I th I have I don't think I've seen this much. Um, I'm gonna try and because I said, wow, what happened to this one? He goes, this has been in the cupboard, mate. This is in the stall. I'm like, I haven't even looked at this. <laughs> I haven't looked at any of them. Um, I think that could be quite wow. Well. And they all do seem to be complete. This has just had a, a real heavy knock. Um, I'll leave that out. It's just a, a fucking hell, let's see. Who was it? Who said about this? I might have to glue it. If I can glue it. Don't like to do glue in, but I fucking have an iron this and a glue it. It might not be a bad a bad one. And I think this is the one that. Because <laughs> they have it and they'd, they'd bite them boxed. I think it's like £1.75. It's Desert Strike. So you can see, unfortunately, it has took a whack right across there. Now, yeah, I can iron a lot of this out with a Daz iron, <clears throat> get it flat, but I think that rip there, um, there's a big mic, big mic Houlihan, it's on the back. Yeah, you know, if you glue it and just pinch it together, because you can't, this cable's that thick, but yeah, it's, it's Desert Strike. Desert Fighter, which is basic Desert Strike. I'll show you separately, because as I say, it's, it's absolutely mullered. <clears throat> you can see whether it's took a whack, but all in the bag is. <clears throat> so unfortunately, the trays took a bit of a, a bosh as well. Um, I could probably reform a lot of that. That's the first one. Next up, and he, he went, um, when we sort of agreed the price, we went, well, you might as well have this as well then. So for nothing, for free, off, off the 65 quid, so it's all 65 quid, he chucked in a boxed um, Super Nintendo uh, Imagineer Commander, Commander 2. <clears throat> I don't think these are very good. It's not a hoary one, is it? I don't, I'm, I'm sure... No, because so some of these were hoary rebranded controllers, but I don't think that's one of them. But for free, for free, man. Box, box game commander. Um, <clears throat> just trying to put these in sort of semblance of awesomeness. Um, next up, I don't think I've got this one. Again, not bad. Just a little bit of a sump. WF Royal Rumble. I've probably got... Tell you what, this is the one. I've got a story about this one. I have got a story about this. Anyway, WF Royal Rumble. So we've got Bret Hitman Hart, Undertaker, Mr. Perfect, uh, Yokozuna, uh, Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels. Is it this one? No, it's not. You know what, I'm talking bullshit. It's not this one. It's not a story about this one. It's the precursor to this. Which is WrestleMania, isn't it? I had a story about that one. So I haven't got a story about this one, you can fuck off. <clears throat> but <clears throat> these are all <clears throat> other than the outer boxes. Bag it up the lot. Just a bit of the obviously it's just that sump. And if you like. Get the old Daz iron on it and pop it out. So we have uh, WF Royal Rumble, and this is the one. Excuse. This one is is mint. I would class this as mint. Um. I'm not sure if I've got this. No, actually, I have got it, but I don't think it's in good condition as this one is. And it's Starwing. So you still got the seal at one end. 
but this thing is a uh, I think there's one scuff just there this wasn't the one that they were arguing about because I think they'd even offer this one I think they'll offer them 14 quid for it and this is absolutely gorgeous it's a really nice example <clears throat> again all there uh, so that's definitely going I've got I've got one or two box protectors left um, so that one I thought that they were um and iron about and I sort of said well look to be honest that to me would be mint um, they said oh, no, that's not the one it's, it's, I mean, it's not this next game I'll show it's the one after this one uh, this one was on there and I did spice in the back it's had a bit of a rough life it's not it's all there it's I think put it in a box tech it, it will do it the world of good um, it's one I don't have boxed it's one I think it's a yellow version I think it's a yellow version I don't think it's a red version that really commands uh, a fair old lick of money and it's Super Mario World so bizarrely the guy had because I think he's got the Mario, he bought the Mario All Stars pack, but that doesn't include this one, does it? No, it doesn't. Hence why he bought this. Um, so probably like a late comer if you like to the. And it's just the box is just a little bit tired. It's not, it's not mangled. It's not like yeah, there's nothing uh, other than that little corner there. You know, it's not completely fuckoodled. But again, it's all there. So, stick that in the box protector. I think that'll come out all right. Quite interestingly, look on the back. They've re. Um, what was behind that? Oh, because it looks like it's multilingual. So, this must have been um, Euro release, multilingual one. And when it come to the UK, this packaging, obviously they didn't want it to sort of go to the European office. Maybe, don't know. Answering the postcard. Talking shit, Stu. Yeah. Pissed. Yeah. Ow. Check. Last two. So this one was what they were uh, initially um and arm about. I don't think it was so much the guy. Um, I think it was the guy's I, the manager and the guy behind the till questioning the condition of it and, and the price on this one it, it from a mint to a, a box it's like I, I say from what this what the guy quoted is about 30 odd quid ridiculous I don't think I've even got this one I've got this US boxed I don't have or I didn't have the power version and now I've got and I tell you what this is not a bad car it's not mint it's not a minter it's an honest really nice copy of this it's Super Mario Kart again part sealed no it's not it's just <laughs> I opened at one end um, Edgeware Edgeware bit of sticker residue I don't know what that's from looks like something was stuck over that end was that the Toys R Us one you know Toys R Us you stick stickers over one end shaft rubbing, shaft rubbing, and then the back. But I don't think I've got the PAL version of this. Or well, if I have, I've got this is the greatest hits, like a, the best of. I can't remember now, but yeah, again, all there. Not very often I drop lucky and people say, Fuck off, Stu, you was fucking lucky. I'm not, honestly, I'm not a lucky some people. Um, <clears throat> so I was quite willing to concede. I said to the guy, Look, it's up to you, what do you want to do? Uh, again, I don't want to piss the CX guy off. And I said to him, I said, Look, look I'm, I'm quite happy to concede Starwing because I thought that was mint. And um, I think Mario Kart, he went, No, no, no the other ones that have got the real money is this game here. So I was weirdly thinking, 
well, if you could earn a bit and I can earn a bit, then everyone's happy and the guy gets what he wants. But the guy was sort of saying, look, you know, Steve, just, just take it outside. So, including the price, um, I'm pretty sure I've got this. I'm pretty sure. Now, whether mine is in better and or, or equal condition, I don't know. Again, it's not a minter. It's really nice, honest copy. A few, like, dinks, a few creases at Mario Kart 64. So, the guy had um, an only All-Stars pack and he had a standard N64, which bizarrely only seemed to consist of this. <laughs> in terms of game, so there was... You know, which suits me. Sorry about that, guys. Memory was full. Hopefully, I've reviewed a few things. It might give us enough leverage to finish this video. So, yeah. Um, Mario Kart 64 on the N64. So, the guy had an N64. I did double check with the guy which version it was in case it's one of the colour fantastics. It wasn't. It's just a standard one. So, oh, I'll was, was say. They've got a box snares. They've got a box N64 at the guy. I hope that's enough leeway for not to be too pissed off with me. Um, this again is in pretty nice condition. It's not a minter, it's an honest copy. Um, you know, an honest box copy. Bit of creasage there. So, for the 65 bones, I'll show you the boxes, it'll be easier. Inadvertent CX haul. Sorry, I'm sure you'll, you'll you'll make money anyway. But yeah, quite happy, and you never know. So the guy's got my number. Anything and nothing. He said he's got a Specky Plus Two somewhere. He doesn't worry. He said he was going to tip it. So I'll probably just fucking tip that. I said, mate, a lot. Of Here's my number. Obviously, I'll give you you know if it's a tenner or whatever. So I pay your fuel or whatever you want. Said. Um, so that might become, it might come to fruition, he might go, you know what, fuck it, I can't be bothered. But nonetheless, I think I'm doing alright there. <laughs> Off the back of CX. <laughs> Take it easy, YouTube, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.